Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel, it's Maria. As you can see from the title, today I'm going to be talking about books that I rated higher than I wanted to because of booktube pressure. Now I would like to point out that as much as yes, like this was because of booktube pressure, like this was 100% my fault. I want to talk just about how like that affected me and how I used to rate books way higher than I wanted to because I felt like, you know, people really loved them on booktube and that everyone was raving about them and then I rated them higher and talked about them as if I liked them more than I actually did. And I don't do it anymore. I think that also in high school I was more impressionable and I wanted to like fit in in the community. I think this community can be very isolating sometimes if you're not in one of the like higher up like big subscribers, you know, booktube groups with all the booktube friends and stuff. Like I, I, I've felt that way for a really long time but I think I just I wanted to fit in and I wanted to like them as much as everyone else and I just thought oh well it's fine. Like you know I'll give it a five stars even though I felt like it was like a three or a two. So I've definitely gone back and changed a lot of these ratings over time. I've realized that, you know, I definitely succumbed to the pressures and I just wanted to talk about that. You know, it's normal. It's okay. We all do it sometimes. We give in to the peer pressure of the higher rating. Sometimes even the peer pressure of the lower rating is a thing because people don't really love a book and then you read it and you really enjoy it. But then you feel like, should I have enjoyed it as much as I did? No one else seemed to enjoy it as much as I did or very few people seem to enjoy it as much as I did. Is there something wrong with me? Like, do I not have good taste in books? Can you tell my anxiety brain is on all the time? Yes, I have anxiety. This is my brain all the time, overthinking everything. But I think that a lot of people do a similar thing. I just wanted to bring up the conversation. Have you ever rated a book higher because of booktube pressure or lower? Today I'm only talking about books I rated higher, but there are definitely books that I rated lower that I think I should have rated higher because I really, really enjoyed it and I still think about it. So thought it would be a fun conversation and also kind of fun to talk about these books that I didn't really like that much but rated too high. The first book is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell and I think now no one would judge me for rating this lower but I remember reading it and then everyone was obsessed with it at the time in booktube. Like this was yeah when I was in high school back in like 2014, 2015. 15, 2013, honestly, I can't remember what year I read it, but I gave this five out of five stars on Goodreads. I did not like this book and I feel validated now that people are coming out and talking about it and like saying that it was problematic and that they didn't really like it, but at the time I really felt this pressure because everyone was obsessed with this book. Everyone loved it. They thought it was so sweet. They thought it was so wholesome. They thought it was so cute and I remember just being weirded out by the whole thing and not really enjoying it that much and like finding it kind of weird and like I I couldn't put my finger on what I didn't like and now I can obviously there's a, like a lot of racist stuff in it but at the time I just remember getting weird vibes and not enjoying it and then being like well crap everyone loves this book so gotta give it five out of five I think I went back and gave it like two out of five it wasn't like the worst book I've ever read but it wasn't good so I love other books by Rainbow Rowell but this was not it Eleanor and Park was not it for me the next book is Me Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews I did not like this book like more than Eleanor and Park I really hated this book I didn't understand the point of it I didn't like the writing I didn't like the plot I didn't like anything about it like I respect that other people really like it and I'm really happy for you but like I just so disliked this book. I remember reading it and then getting on booktube to look up reviews of it and people just raving about it. I was like what's wrong with me? Did I miss something? What's going on? I had yet to know that sometimes you just don't like things and it's okay to not like things. You don't have to be a dick about it, but you cannot like things. It's okay. So I think I ended up giving it like four out of five stars, which was very generous for me because I went back and I think it gave it like two or one. I really hated this book. Like I, it's hard for me to put words to why. I just remember thinking it was, the plot was dumb and that there was no point to it. Like it was so, such an unsatisfying read. Like it just did not do anything for me. So that's my little rant about me, Earl, and the dying girl which is unfortunate because so many people loved it back in the day. Next, this was right when Booksplosion started. So I remember, I think this was one of their first books, if not their first book. I don't quite remember, but they read Panic by Lauren Oliver. And I was like, okay, I've read Delirium. It was fine. Didn't continue on with the series, but I thought it was good. Like I enjoyed reading it. So why not pick up Panic? I hated this book. I think I rated it again, like four out of five stars because everyone seemed to really love it during the live show. 
and also like just people reading it in general. It's one of the books that's recommended for my zodiac sign, which I find ridiculous because, well, I guess people are different within my zodiac sign too. I don't know if you believe in zodiac signs, but oh my gosh, I really hated this book. I didn't like the main character. I didn't like the plot. The dares were stupid. I just, I just did not like this book. I'm so sorry to Lauren Oliver because I do like her and I think that like good for you you're publishing books like that solid but this was not the book for me and I really didn't like it but I rated it higher because everyone seemed to and I thought there was something wrong with me for disliking it so I gave it like four out of five stars back in the day and I think I've gone back and given it like a two or one as you can see it's not just like oh I rated it like 0.5 stars higher I think that is something that fluctuates with everyone like this was I rated it as if I really really enjoyed it and I really really didn't and should have rated it way lower to really express my feelings. The next book is The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight by Jennifer E. Smith. And I just, I think that when I read these books, her books, I realized that I don't think contemporary YA romances for me, other than like Anna and the French Kiss, I tend to really not like contemporary young adult romance. It's not for me. Or like just contemporary young adult is not really for me. I've never really enjoyed it. Like even in high school, I didn't enjoy it. This is not me coming from the place of like, well, I'm 23 now. So like, <laughs> I don't want to read young adult anymore. Like that's not it. It just is not for me. It makes me feel weird and I don't really like it. And I t tend to really be irritated and feel gross while reading it. I cannot explain why other than it just makes me feel weird 95% of the time. I still try to read it sometimes because like I said, Anna and the French Kiss is one of my favorite books and that is a YA contemporary book. So I still try them out because you never know if you might find a favorite, but it's definitely not my go-to genre. I tend to like adult contemporary romances better, although they're not my favorite either. I'm more of like a historical fiction or like a fantasy romance person. The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight, this is what happens looks like. Both of these books are books I read and just did not enjoy. They were not for me. I did not like them and I think I rated them way too high. I think I rated them like four out of five stars at the time. I think now I brought it down to like a three or a two. I just didn't have a good time reading them. Like I had a bad time and I was sad. That's not the kind of feeling you want to have when you're reading a book. Although it's supposed, to, If it's supposed to make you sad then maybe but I don't think this was supposed to make me sad but this just made me upset and I had a bad time reading them. Next is The Duff by Cody Keplinger. I also read Lying Out Loud by Cody Keplinger. I hated both of those books. I hate books very rarely, but when I do, like, I hate them. And these two books drove me nuts. When I read them, they upset me so greatly. Like, I felt rage while reading these books. The characters upset me so much, and the plot upset me so much. And The Duff is one of my favorite movies, which makes no sense, but the book and the movie are very, very different. The vibe is very different. I just really, these books made me feel icky inside. I wasn't rooting for the characters. I did not like them. It just was upsetting. It was an upsetting time for reading for me. It was a bad time. That's all I can say is it was a bad time. So I definitely rated these way higher at the time because I remember the Duff was like a big craze and I liked the movie. They were one star reads for me. They were not good and I did not like them. And I'm sorry if that's mean, but I didn't. And that's just the truth. Next, I rated Dream House by Marcia B Zognin way higher than I should have. I got this book to review, which was part of the pressure. I have a really hard time rating books low when I've been sent them for review, which I've gotten way better at. I've, I've been bad at it. Like in high school, I was like, I'm gonna hurt the author's feelings. And I was like, well, you also can't get people to buy this book if you don't like it. And this was a book that just was not well written. Like it just wasn't, it wasn't terrible. Like I don't think that, I think I gave it like five or four stars. I think it was more like a three or a two and a half. Like it wasn't the worst thing I've ever read. It just wasn't that great. Like it wasn't well written. I feel like the plot didn't make a lot of sense. It was not what I rated it and I reread it for sure. Don't, I don't really recommend that book unless you're super bored and you have nothing else on your TBR. Next and my last one for this list, I'm sure there are more but I didn't want to make like a three hour long video and that is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I remember now people make fun of it but at the time people kept posting reviews that were like I was confused by this but it was good and I have a video that I never posted that I filmed of me kind of like talking about the book and ranting but also trying to make it seem like I liked it. I did not like it. I did not like it and you know obviously we're all against HP now because of J.K. Rowling being 
a turf and we don't like that here. But like, aside from that, like that was before she was even, I mean, she was problematic at the time, I think too, but not as problematic as she is now. I just didn't like the book. Like it was bad. And so many people were into it. And it was bad. It was objectively bad. She didn't even write it, but it was just bad. Voldemort has like sex with Bellatrix and they have a love child. Like, I'm sorry if I spoiled you, but it's been out for forever and I don't regret it because it was just bad. It was not good. It made no sense. People say that seeing it on stage is way better. I don't even know if I want to do that because number one, the money will go in her pocket. And number two, it was bad. So I don't know if I want to subject myself to that. So that's the conclusion that I have come to is that I rated books way too highly back in the day and I should have been rating them exactly how I felt about them, which that's what I do now. Don't worry. You don't have to be scared of me like lying about books that I like when I don't actually like them. I don't really do it anymore. I think about my reviews and my ratings a lot more deeply now and I try not to be influenced by people but oh my gosh yeah these books are books I really disliked and I talked about them as if I enjoyed felt like if we're gonna start this new chapter of my channel I gotta gotta clear some things up let me know if there's any books that you rated higher because of booktube pressure and if you really hated them or if you just kind of felt more neutrally and you figured eh, why not I'll give it a five or I'll give it a four but I am curious to see if did you like any of these books that I ranted about I'm very sorry if I offended you did you also dislike them the way I did I'm very curious to know Thank you for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. As always, my links are down below, like my Goodreads, my Twitter, my Facebook page, my Instagram, and all that fun stuff, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!